Hey guys, Kaylee here from Expats Everywhere, and I just finished an amazing interview with a girl named Ellie. Ellie is also a fellow YouTuber, but she's living as an expat in Thailand. She's in Phuket, so take a look at what she has to say and pop on over to her channel as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to Expats Everywhere. Can you tell us your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, thank you for having me on. Um, I am Ellie and I am from London, but I've moved to Phuket, Thailand uh, about just over a year ago. So this is my second year here now. Basically, I did a biology degree at Sussex University. With that, I had to do my dissertation abroad and it just gave me the travel bug. But I also really wanted to keep earning money. So I went into teaching and did my PGC at St. Mary's University Twickenham and basically as soon as I got out of that I did my NQT and applied for an international job here in Phuket um, so that I could travel around Southeast Asia and um, continue earning money and saving up and stuff for maybe potentially relocating permanently at some point um, and more travel. So. So relocating permanently, like where is another place you would like to live? Um, so possibly we've been looking into Australia or Central America. We're not really sure yet, but yeah, basically need to travel as much as possible and work out where it is that we want to go. Um, in the summer, we went to Bali and thought that that might be a good place. And then we were like, oh, not quite for us. So, um, yeah, it's just trying to work that out at the moment whilst we travel around. Right. So let's talk about Phuket. What is it like living and working in Thailand? Oh, it's amazing. Um, it's very chilled out. Um, everyone's very relaxed and um, there's a really nice expat community here um, because of all the international schools. There's loads just where I live on the island and then also off the island. And um, there's also a big TEFL community here. So it teaches that do the English teaching in the Thai schools. Um, so yeah, I think it's really good because even though working in an international school can be really demanding, just the same as in England, um, you know, you get to go to the beach on the weekends or even after work and there's lots of nice cafes and um, viewpoints and things to go to to take your mind off work and just sort of relax, which is, I prefer it a lot more to England because you just don't really do that, you go home sit around, <laughs> you know, go to sleep. Um, so I prefer the work-life balance here much better. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, and do you know any other jobs that are available for expats? The only people I've really met that have other jobs other than teaching are dive masters and dive instructors where we've gone out diving, and they love it here. Um, the diving's pretty good. Other than that, I have a couple of friends there who are teachers, they're partners, they work in things like boat making and there's a few you know other jobs on the islands that you can do if you aren't a teacher but to be honest most of the people I know are teachers just because of the people I work with in the community and a lot of the couples even are both teachers so I'm not 100% sure of many more job opportunities other than that on the island or in Thailand. Okay so what does a typical day look like as a teacher? So for me in my school, it involves waking up pretty early, earlier than in England, I would imagine, something to do with the heat. Um, so work starts at half seven, and then it's a typ typically the same as in the UK. So we work a maximum of 20, 22 hours contact time, um, and then we get some free time in there for planning and stuff. And then the kids are great. So there's not really behavioral management problems here, um, which I know is a big benefit to a lot of the teachers that work out here. And um, yeah, and then we finish at around 3.20 and we have to do after school clubs till about half four most days. And then, yeah, most of us will come home and get in the pool or chill like in the sun, go to the beach or go to a nice cafe. Um, the good thing about here is that everything's a bit cheaper so there's a lot of like going out and eating most nights with your friends and the people you work with which is really nice so yeah that's pretty much a typical day or typical work day here and how much can someone expect to earn being an international teacher 
so. It depends on what international school you go to. Some of the newer ones will pay about what you would earn as a new teacher in England. Um, there's less tax here, so that kind of works out. So it might be a slight pay cut from England if you're a young teacher or a new teacher, but then it should average out with less tax. Whereas um, some of the more established international schools will pay more, which would be around three three and a half thousand pounds a month um you you tend to find you don't get paid that much different depending on your experience level um but you should like get pay rises each year that you work um i'm not sure about more experienced teachers because most of the teachers i know that come here are like younger teachers that are fresh out of nqt um but yeah so you should look to earn about the same as the uk if not more um, which is really nice Okay, so if you're a new teacher and you don't have much experience, the money that you said, is it enough money to live on and what kind of lifestyle can you live? Yeah, well, a big problem for me in the UK, which is one of the reasons I was like, I need to get out of here, is that the money that you earn, especially as a new teacher, isn't enough to get a mortgage. You'd be lucky if you could find somewhere. I live in outer London, but pretty much anywhere in the south of the UK, um, you know, on your earnings. Like, so most people will live with their parents now until like 25, 26, um, if not older. And uh, here, the biggest reason why I love living here is because I have a house um, that I rent and I rent it for about 250 pounds a month. And I share that, so I share the rent with my housemate, but it's a two bedroom house, big double rooms. Um, lovely like open plan kitchen, living room, swimming pool outside that we share with a couple other houses. So that is a major benefit because that whole idea of like freedom and independence just wasn't possible in the UK. Um, and yeah, we eat out most nights, which again, wouldn't be affordable in London really. Um, everything works out much cheaper living costs wise here. Um, so you can afford to be a bit more luxurious. It's really nice. I really love that about living in Thailand. Okay, so if someone is making £3,500 a month, will they be able to save any of that? Yeah, so, I mean, I currently earn less than that, a lot less than that. I earn, um, I suppose, after tax, about £2,000 a month. And I can save, if I'm not booking any holidays, if I can save between a quarter to half of that, even with the house and the car. Um, so that's quite good, but I have to say I spend most of mine on the next trip in all the holidays, so I don't get to see very much of it going to a savings account, but I'm quite happy with that at the moment. But yeah, you could definitely save here as well, which is fantastic. Okay, so if someone has found a job and they're moving there, how much money do you think that they should have saved up to get started? I think your first year will be the most expensive because you have to put deposits down on the flat that you're renting or the house that you're renting. Um, you know, you want to buy nice things for your apartment and make it look nice and homely. You have to pay a small amount of money for like visas. Um, it's not too much, but in order to leave Thailand and keep coming back in without it voiding your visa, you have to pay like a certain amount to do that, maybe like a hundred pounds. So I would say you don't need that much. You could come here with nothing. Um, but I would say maybe a thousand pounds just to get you going, you know, get you set up. Yeah. As a minimum, probably. Yeah. And what should someone pack? What's the weather like? <laughs> um, I wish someone had told me this when I came here cause I bought jeans. It is pretty much 30 degrees all year round. Um, even when it's thunderstormy and rainy in like the low season, um, it's pretty hot. In fact, in the low season, it's really humid. Um, so yeah, you would need just shorts, t-shirts, skirts, dresses, um, nothing too fancy because everyone's very chilled here, keep it quite casual most of the time. Uh, obviously, if you're working as a teacher, definitely need to bring um, outfits which cover your shoulders and your knees um, just out of respect for the Thai culture. Um, I wouldn't advise either unless you're on the beach wandering around in really skimpy clothes like keep it moderately conservative most of the time 
Um, so yeah, I would just bear that in mind that you have some long trouser options or some longer t-shirt options. And is there anything that you can't find there that you would tell people they should bring? In terms of the clothes, there are now, there's a couple of big shopping centers, so it is getting better, but they're more expensive. So you have like H&M here and Topshop, but you'll look to pay like 10, 15 pounds more for each item than if you're in England. So just bring clothes that will last you. Um, there is market clothes, but they're quite small because Thai people are quite petite. And so I wouldn't be able to find anything for myself really in a market um, that would fit comfortably. But um, yeah, so just make sure you bring enough clothes to last you that you're happy with. But there is a uh, shops called Villa Market here, which sell pretty much every exported item you could want food wise. Um, the only thing that I have to bring or get people to bring um, is I'm vegan. So um, like vegan cheese and stuff like that, vegan snacks, because you won't really find any of that here. Okay, and um, these things that are imported, are they um, more expensive than normal? Yeah, it's, it can be quite pricey. Yeah, like for my, I get um, Marmite. <laughs> Have you heard of Marmite? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll look to pay like, yeah, quite a lot of money compared to if you were eating in the markets or going to like Big C, um, probably double the price of if it was in the UK. Um, so, yeah, but it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's change it up a little bit and let's talk about safety. How safe is Phuket and do you feel safe there? Yeah, um, it's really safe. Um, I've never felt um, unsafe. I leave, you know, if I go to a cafe or something and I'm on my own and I need to go to the toilet, I'll still leave my laptop plugged in at the wall and my, leave my bag on the chair and you should be pretty fine. The Thai people are so friendly and they'll look after you as well. So like if you leave your laptop, the Thai people will, you know, keep an eye on it. They would never pinch it or very rarely. Yeah, I've never, I've not heard of anyone having issues with that. There have been issues with people because of that safe feeling everyone has, like for the whole of last year, I let, we used to like not lock our doors when we went out. And um, there have been a couple of people I know that have just got caught out doing that, which you know, we shouldn't be doing that. You should lock your doors. So there's no like breaking an entry, but if you leave your doors open and you happen to live on like a road where it's not like a gated community, you know, there is a chance that people will go in and pinch your stuff, which I have heard happen a couple of times. Other than that, there is, you shouldn't bid people on the road. Um, people get quite, anno it's just not, you don't show anger towards people in Thai culture. Like you have to stay, even if something really bad happens, everyone stays very calm. You shouldn't really show, you know, you couldn't have a public argument with your partner or whatever. That would be really disrespectful. Um, so there's no bibbing on the roads, really. And the only other instances of people getting in a bit of trouble is when they've been, like, you know, aggressive on the roads and someone's got out of their car and been like, what are you doing? Like, and started being quite aggressive back. But, you know, as long as you just keep a cool head, you should be absolutely fine here. Okay, and how do you meet people? I think other than at work, which is obviously most of us tend to hang out with people from work. Um, it's a really nice community in that sense. There have been events on the island where um, events for teachers from other international schools to meet up and get to know each other a bit, which is really nice. That happens quite, it's not too often, but maybe once every three to six months. And then a lot of people here will join like Zumba or clubs there's lots of gyms here a massive um muay thai community which is like the boxing so there's lots of gyms here lots of classes a lot of people come from the uk for health and fitness holidays okay and what other kinds of things do you do for fun um so there's lots of diving on the island um you can go diving at the weekends on like a, do three dives in a day that's really fun a little bit pricey <laughs> sometimes we go and play badminton or we've gone paddle boarding there's a couple of surf houses which are like fake surf like water rapids and you can get up on the board and surf and there's a couple of nights where like ladies go free and things like that so we've done that yeah mainly just going to the beach I would say <laughs> like making the most of that luxury I would say that tends to be most of it yeah what is your visa process like? 
So before I came to Thailand, I had to go to the embassy in the UK, the Thai embassy, and you have to, the school really helped me with that. They send you all the documents you need, like their license as a school. You have to get a few bits and bobs that are all outlined on the website, um, the Thai embassy website, and you take it in a big pack with your passport photos and you just spend a couple of hours up there and it all gets processed and you get a stamp that you need to get into the country on your arrival. And then when you join the school, they will take all of that and they will apply for your work visa um, and your work permit and everything else you need. Um, that still only gives you 90 days to be in the country, even with your work permit, but you just have to go back to the Thai uh, immigration office here and just confirm to them that you're still here, you're still working in the school and they just extend it. Um, or you can get a non-immigrant visa and do get one where you're allowed to re-enter multiple times, like a re-entry permit. Um, that costs about £100, but it means that you should have absolutely no problem leaving the country as many times as you want and re-entering based on your non-immigrant visa. Okay, so the work visa, so you will go and tell them you're still working at the school and it's renewed for another 90 days, that's how it works? Yeah, it's like a 90-day update. You just need to go and confirm you're still there. Um, some people come here and don't get that, and then what they do is they do Im immigration runs to like the nearby countries, like they'll go to um, Myanmar or to uh, Cambodia or somewhere where they can then come back in on a tourist visa, because um, I think a tourist visa gives you 30 days. Um, so yeah. Okay, and is that common for people who are working there to, to possibly do that for a visa? So I think if you're working here in like a legitimate organization, the company should sort that all out for you and actually you should be fine to get a work visa. But if it's some, even if it's a legitimate organization and it's not recognized as like an official job that can count you for like the work visa, then you might have to go on the visa runs until you get it sorted. Um, yeah, for me personally, it was all sorted through the school. It's, it was pretty smooth going. Yeah. Okay. How about healthcare? Um, how's the healthcare there? And would you feel comfortable getting a procedure done? Yeah. So the hospitals here are really nice and um, very modern. I've been there for in all my health checks. When you first join the school, you have to go and get some health checks done. Um, and the hospitals are really nice. I've had a couple of friends get uh, dengue fever and the hospitals have looked after them really, really well. Um, we are covered with the school health insurance. But that's, there's some little things that you just need to double check that doesn't cover you for. So then I also took out extra. When I got my Thai visa card, um, there was an option to get a card that came with some additional cover for health. So I just took out the one that covered me a little bit more. Um, and in terms of that, people who have ended up in hospital for whatever reason here, they've had no problems. It's all been covered and um, most times to get fully covered, you have to be admitted overnight. If you're not admitted, it can cost you a little bit, but generally it's quite cheap. And do you think that Phuket is a good travel hub? Yeah, it's such a good place. I like to tell all my friends and my family they need to come here. Um, I think Phuket is, is getting more popular, but people have always tended to go to more like Koh Samui and Koh Tao and the more popular islands, which are slightly more north. And, um, but Phuket's great. You've got like the elephant sanctuary, um, which like looks after like retired elephants from the, um, that have been doing like the rides and stuff. And then they've also got the diving and there's lots of trips you can do from here to Phi Phi and other nearby islands like Koh Yao Yai is my favorite one. Um, yeah, it's really good. And the beaches are gorgeous here. Like, and because it's such a small island, you can get from like one end to the other in like an hour and a half. You can see so much if you were to come here in like if you only had a week or two. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's really, really good here if you're like a tourist, yeah. Can you tell us some pros and cons about living and working in Phuket? Yeah, I think if you are a teacher and you... Uh, are expecting to come here for a holiday and it'd be like a permanent holiday and not have to work very hard and uh, that's like really inaccurate 
uh, the job here is just as hard as it can be in England. Um, you know, the hours are still long and that can be sometimes even more frustrating because you know that you want to just be on the beach, but you've got, you're working so hard. But um, yeah, so just don't come with like false views of what your job is going to be like. I would say the transport here, the main forms of transport most people will take is the scooter um, and the mopeds, but, or like bike. And your other option is car. And cars are really expensive here. They really hold their value. So if you're looking to buy a car, you're talking about quite a lot of money, even for a rubbish car that's like really old. Um, whereas the bikes are much, much cheaper, really good way to get around. But I would say 50% of the people I know have had at some point one accident that has, you know, left them in like bandages and struggling to walk for a little while. So, um, the roads can be quite hectic, nowhere near as hectic as other places I've been in Asia. Um, but, um, there's definitely a set of rules here that you'll have to adapt to that doesn't happen in like the UK, but you kind of get used to that. I chose to drive after a little while of renting a scooter, but yeah, that, that actually costs more than my rent. Wow. <laughs> that each month. Yeah. So, I mean, it's worth it for me because I'm rubbish. I have like no coordination on a bike and my family were like, Oh my God, you're not still driving that horrible bike. But, um, yeah, so that's my biggest outgoing is my car that I rent. Um, if I could go back, I would have bought one and then cause that, cause they keep their value. I could have sold it off at the end for probably a similar price, but, um, it's a bit late now, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that would be a recommendation from me to buy a car if you're planning on staying for a couple of years um other than that that's like the only negatives like it's just maybe a little little bit too much traffic on the island but I think you get that in a lot of places as well in Asia but other than that it's mostly positives the chilled atmosphere that's definitely the one for me and just you know I just think there's so much less stress here just because of the culture and everyone's karma the Thai people are so friendly um yeah, just going to the beach if you're a bit stressed after work, you know, whatever happened at work, you quickly forget about it when you're sitting on a beach in the sunshine, like watching the sunset and being able to go for dinner with people every night. And, um, you know, whereas at home, you'd have to really be conscious of like counting the pennies every time you, you know, want a pudding or something at the end of your meal. Like, so yeah, they're the positives for me is just having the nice lifestyle. Great. And lastly, tell us about your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, so when I was in England before I moved to Thailand, um, my family always have to tell us what you're up to and like keep us updated. And um, and basically I was like, oh, this could be like a lengthy process, like making all these calls with the time difference and everything. So I just thought, well, I wanted to get into my photography and my video and more. So I'll just buy a camera and I'll start making videos. And I thought it would be more of like, a vlog but it's ended up just being more of a you know travel documenting my travels basically and uploading a video for the different places I go and yeah so it started out like that just wanting to update my family and then yeah people started to like really enjoy them like some of my friends um watch quite a lot which is really nice um and the kids at school love them <laughs> um, so yeah um it's just a hobby for me really um and just see where it goes but um, I love looking back at and watching them and seeing what I got up to and it's like a home video for me I think. <laughs> and <laughs> what's the name of it so people can go see it? Um, it's just called Ellie Lemon, um, that's not my last name but it's a nickname that I've had since school so uh, Ellie Lemon it was mainly because as a teacher you have to try and keep a little bit under wraps you know not putting your full name and information out for everyone to find you but um, yeah, and so yeah, if you want to check it out, there's, it's mostly traveling around Southeast Asia um, with a couple of other random ones thrown in there. I'm hoping to do more. The aim is to do them more frequently and more often. So that's the channel. So if you want to check it out, I much appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, well, great. Well, Ellie, thank you so much for uh, talking about your experience in Phuket today. Perfect. Thank you for having me again.